I, I, I grew up on DVD extras. I'm 30 now and, you know, I would always be the one to go out and make sure I buy the two disc edition. I never bought the one disc because I really wanted to watch the behind the scenes of the film because it made me appreciate the film more, knowing what the director and what the team had to do in order to get the shots. I'm sure you as a photographer, you will most likely feel the same way. People would say, doesn't that ruin the film? No, it doesn't. I enjoy the film so much more knowing what they had to do in order to get that shot. And this is the same with behind the scenes videos. Behind the scenes, you can show the beginning, the middle, and then the image is the end. Rather than just showing the end product, show people what you did to get there. It, it's, it's all about the context. Let me give you an example about context. So this is my favorite anecdote from one of my favorite authors called Austin Cleon. Now on screen, you can see two images. So what I want you to do, th this is an example of giving you guys context, okay? So imagine you're a wealthy collector who's just entered the gallery in an art museum. On the wall facing you, there are two gigantic canvases, each more than 10 foot high. Both images depict a sailing boat at sunset. From across the room, they look identical. The same boat, the same reflections on the water, the same sun at the same stage of setting. You go in for a closer look. You can't find the label or a museum tag anywhere. You become obsessed with the paintings, which you nickname Painting A and Painting B. You spend nearly an hour going back and forth from canvas to canvas, even down to the brush strokes. You can't detect a single difference. The head curator walks in and you inquire the origins of your new obsession. The curator tells you that painting A was painted in the 17th century by a Dutch master. And what about painting B? The curator says, that's a forgery. It was copied last week by a graduate student at a local art college. Now, even though they're exactly the same, what one would you rather take home? Would you rather take home painting A or painting B? You'd rather take home painting A, right? Because of the story that I've just given you, because when that's on your wall, people come round and you'll tell them that it was painted in the 17th century by a Dutch master. Do you see how adding that bit of context just makes the image even better? You're attaching a story to it. We as humans, we just love the idea of storytelling and the sharing the creative process for me is an extension of that storytelling technique. And I, I do it in the form of moving image. As I said earlier, you can do it in other forms, time-lapse, sketches, etc., etc. For me though, behind the scenes video is the best way. We all do it. We've all seen countless videos on YouTube already, haven't we? Where we see photo shoot tutorials. We watch them because we want to see how they do it and why they've chosen to put a light in a certain way. This is why you watch it because it's that feed, that hunger of wanting to know how they've done something. So if you have clips or behind the scenes or if you can bring a videographer or a friend who knows how to use a video camera to film some clips of you, if you can put that with the images, put some nice music behind it, I guarantee that that will do better than just sharing the image alone. For me, as I said, it's been my number one marketing technique. I've had brands approach me because of the video I've posted not because of it. People are more interested in how I shoot something, not what I shoot. We're not, I'm not the best photographer. You're not the best photographer ever. But the way you share it, that's what's unique. To give you another example, if you think of when you were at school, uh, say secondary school, when I think of secondary school, I'm not thinking of um, a particular subject. I'm thinking of the teacher. I'm thinking of the, uh, my favorite teacher not because of the subject, but because of the way he taught the subject. That's what stands out for me. It's not the subject, it's the way you teach it. You know, that's, that's how you be a good teacher. It's not just enough to know the subject, it's the way you obviously teach it. That's what makes you unique. And that's what can make you unique as a photographer. It's just the way you choose to share your work, how you package it up, build it up, which is why, again, I, I like to share as much as I can when I'm on set, even if that's just a form of a little Instagram story, don't be shy. It's just a little 15 second clip and just say, hey, my name's Tommy, I'm here on, on this shoot. We're about to do a portrait session. I've got my light up here at a 45 degree angle using this light I actually have. <laughs> then brands can see it and think, I wanna work with him. 
because not only does he create great images, he seems like a nice person to work with. And do you know what, sometimes that's all it takes. Another point I wanna make where some people might choose not to create behind the scenes is, well, what if I fail? What if it goes wrong? If things go wrong, show it. Again, it comes back to point number one, it humanizes you. It, you're a real person, you do make mistakes. I actually did a talk at the photography show, I think a couple of years ago, when I went to Ethiopia and the last couple of days in, a lot of bad things happened. And I spent the kind of the last kind of five or 10 minutes of my talk talking about how we nearly lost all of our um, images. We got in with the wrong crowd. If you wanna see it, it's on my YouTube channel. But the point is, after that talk, people were coming up to me and all they could talk about was the last five minutes of my talk. They almost completely ignored the first 25 minutes of me talking about the trip and what we did and stuff. All they were interested in was what went wrong. Everything doesn't go perfectly all the time. Again, social media is the worst for that, where we think that everything is perfect and we compare that with our own life and think, well, my life's not perfect. Well, neither is theirs, neither is mine. You, we all choose what to show. And if something goes wrong, then there might actually be more benefits to showing it than not showing it. Now, not only is it creatively fulfilling, not only is it super engaging online, but I did also mention about financial gain. Brands love behind the scenes. If you can go to a brand and say, I can give you this many photos and I can also provide you a behind the scenes video, they are way more likely to say yes and work with you if you can provide that because effectively you are giving them more deliverables. You're not only giving them photos, you're giving them video as well. More content to share on their social media. They're far more likely to say yes if you can, the more deliverables that you can give. If you're a great person, if you're engaging, which I'm sure you are, even if you're an introvert, you can still show a behind the scenes video and I guarantee it will do so, so well for you and your business, I promise. So different ways that you can share your creative process. You can film a behind the scenes video, which is obviously my favorite way. You can post pictures on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, you can tweet photos, short clips, um, Facebook and Instagram Live, that's something that's quite new to me. That's something I'm doing a little bit more of. If you're feeling super confident, yes, you can do that. Um, you can blog your shoot as well. So do a blog post and share behind the scenes photos and do some wording that way. If you don't wanna to talk to camera, that's also a great way as well. Good for Google SEO, search engine optimization as well. You can make notes, share your notes, share different drawings, sketches, Pinterest boards, you can vlog it, share sketches and team selfies as well. All of these are great ways of showing the creative process. They humanize you, they, make, they show your love of photography, and it just shows that you work well in a team. Finally, before I go, I want everyone to do what I've been doing for the last four years, and I want you to create one personal project a month. Just one idea for you, no one else. I've never felt more creatively fulfilled than in my life than I am right now because I am shooting what I want to shoot once a month and that is slowly turning into becoming now my paid work. I'll leave you with this video that I did originally make for you guys back in March. It is online already, you may have seen it, but this is a summary of everything that we've spoken about today. I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you next time. My name's Tommy Reynolds, thanks very much for listening. As a creative, I honestly believe we live in an age where we get just as much fulfillment out of seeing the creative process as much as the final product itself. There's that age old saying, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. As a photographer, I love to share my creative process. I actually get more excited when I share my latest behind the scenes video versus sharing the final images. I used to have reservations about sharing my process. I only wanted to share the final image, no before and after, just the after. But when you share your creative process, you're opening yourself up to becoming more empathetic, inspiring and vulnerable. Brene Brown famously says, vulnerability is not a weakness, it's a strength.
pushing yourself to try something different and sharing how you created that piece of work is incredibly engaging to watch. We don't make art unless we really want to communicate something. It's like watching a movie. You wouldn't sit down to watch the last 15 minutes. You would want to see the build-up and the process that got you there. Well, it's the same with your photography. By simply sharing your process is not only for me creatively fulfilling, but has also played a huge part in my professional success. I've gained work with clients and brands in the past based solely because I've shared what I do and how I do it. Showing how I photograph something has been more successful for me than actually what I photographed. But by doing this, you can show how you run your shoots, how you put a model at ease, the spaces that you use, the gear you use, and what setups you use. A final image can't always show you these great things, so let your audiences know just how much effort has gone into getting just that one shot. There are many different ways you can share what you're working on right now. You can post behind the scenes videos, time lapses, Pinterest boards, podcasts, storyboard sketches, behind the scenes photos, or even post Instagram stories. It's not only a great way to inspire other photographers or creatives, but can also be used to pitch to potential clients and gain paid work doing what you love. No one can explain it the way you can. Austin Cleon says, share what you love and people who love the same things will find you. So find something you're passionate about, feel creatively fulfilled and grow your community through sharing your creative process. Mm -hmm.